Hello and welcome back to Planetarium U. Today we're going to take a look at the southern sky as it appears at about 10 o'clock in early August. Now we're going to go back to our black rectangle in Procreate and starting with the grunge brush we're going to go in like we did last time and like we always do and start putting in some dark blue. Let's let's brighten that up just a hair. Turn our size all the way up and our opacity in the high 30s. And remember we're going to have a little bit brighter glow down low. Just throw in some color in the sky to make it visually interesting. All right. That looks good enough. Let's go to another layer. This time we're going to put in our horizon. We're just going to do plain old black. I'll just get, sketch something in. Work with maybe some gentle hills here. Make him a little bit bigger, so we'll just fill these in. Give some black in there. Fill that black in. Remember, we're out here in the dark. We can't see things too well. Just a general idea of a horizon there. Maybe a few little trees. Little copse trees in the distance there. Just indications. Maybe here we've got a kind of a building. Maybe an old shed. Got the lean going on here. I'm filling in just a little bit. Maybe there's a pole out there behind that old shed. And there's a couple of wires. I'll go back here. A couple of wires hanging off. Remember, no street lights, so no outdoor security lights. And a couple of bushes. Maybe a little fence. Just some indications of life make our scene a little bit more interesting. All right, now let's pop on another layer. Let's go ahead and get our studio pen. Let's pick out a high contrast color. We're going to mark our direction here. Remember, we're going to be looking south. We'll just put an S for south. There we go. All right. We have to keep everything organized, so we're going to keep layers going on. Let's go on and get us a nice little white color here. And think about some of the stars we might see. Okay. Bump her size up a hair. Now, when you look south tonight at about 10 p.m. local time. Now, again, this is for the northern hemisphere. If you live south of the equator, then your sky is going to look very different. Eventually, we'll probably do some southern hemisphere tours, but for right now, we're going to stick with the northern hemisphere because that's where I live, and that's the sky with which I'm most familiar. If you live south of the equator and you'd like to see a painting of your night sky, drop a comment below and let me know, and I'll see about doing that for you. Okay, when we look south tonight, um, one of the first things you'll notice, or just to the east of south, there's a group of stars that look somewhat like a teapot.
Can you see the teapot? Well, here's the bottom of the pot. Here's the spout. Here's the lid. Here's the rest of the body of the pot here. And here's the handle. Now this teapot is actually an asterism. So we have the teapot. The teapot is an asterism, and the last time we learned that asterisms can help us to find constellations. Now the constellation associated with the teapot is Sagittarius. The Archer. Okay, now the whole constellation is, is pretty dim. If there's any light pollution at all in your sky, you probably won't be able to see the rest of it. But if you see the teapot, know that you're looking at Sagittarius, the Archer. Okay, let's back up here a little bit. clear things off, and let's see if we can find another asterism. Let's create another layer. Now, there's going to be a big old fish hook shape in the sky, off to the right of the teapot. It's going to be fairly low, unless you live uh, fairly close to the equator. And a lot of the stars are, are pretty dim, so if you have some light pollution, you may not see them all. There's a brighter one there. Now right up here, this is going to be the brightest one. As a matter of fact, let me change my color. And this one has a noticeable color. Okay, it's going to be kind of an orangey-red color. This one, I'm going to make that dot just a little bit bigger. We'll go back to our white. Then there's going to be three stars out, something like that. Can you see the fish hook shape? Let's draw him in. Now, this fish hook is actually Scorpius the scorpion. Now this curly part we're drawing in now, that's his big old long tail. We're drawing uh, lines up his body. The orangey star here, that is called Antares. That's the heart of the scorpion. And then this region up here represents his eyes or his claws. You can imagine however you wish. Now, Aunt Aries and that's the heart of the scorpion that literally means in Greek not Mars okay and the reason for that is because Mars looks an awful lot like that star in the sky reddish and fairly bright. And Mars also can potentially pass through this part of the sky. Mars is not there right now, so we don't need to worry about confusion. But the name of that star literally means not Mars, and that was a way to avoid the confusion. Now, one other thing I'll say about this, again, we're looking at Scorpius. The Scorpion. OK, 
Okay. Now it is not Scorpio. Okay, that is something to do with astrology, which this this is not what this is. It is not Scorpio. That is an astrological sign, not the constellation. Okay, that's very important to remember. That is this is not Scorpio. It is Scorpius, the scorpion. And what was our teapot again? That's right, Sagittarius. And what was he? The archer. Okay, very good. These are two very bright constellations that you'll see in the southern sky tonight. And even if you have a fair amount of light pollution, like if you live in a, a larger town or a big city, you should still be able to to be able to pick these out. Now, if you live in a darker area, another thing you might see is the Milky Way. So we're going to change brushes here, and let's see. That should be good. We're going to turn the opacity way down, size down a little bit. This is on our grunge brush. Now, the Milky Way is the plane of our galaxy. We live inside a galaxy called the Milky Way, and it is shaped like a disk. And when you look along the disk, you see more stars than you would if you look away from the disk. So when we look along the disk, we actually see what looks like a cloud of stars. Okay. It's, it's pretty faint, even if you live in a relatively dark area. It's pretty faint, but the brightest spot in the Milky Way, which you can kind of see, we're drawing it in here. A little bit lighter, clouded area. The brightest spot in the Milky Way, and this is a little bit exaggerated here, just to show you, is, is near the center. And the center of the Milky Way, let's get kind of the bright pink. Get our pink, our studio pen. The center of the Milky Way is somewhere in this vicinity right here. It's in this general vicinity here. Okay. Now down in the center of the Milky Way, there is a large, supermassive black hole. Now we don't have to worry about getting sucked in. Black holes are not cosmic vacuum cleaners. They, they don't go around sucking everything up. It's just a stellar quartz, okay, a dead star that's not giving off light anymore. Um, the gravity is tremendous, but you have to get very close to a black hole before you have to worry about not being able to get away from it. Now the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way does a very important job. It's the gravity of that black hole that holds the entire galaxy together. So it's real important. So when you look out in the southern sky and you look near the teapot, in fact, the Milky Way looks like steam coming right out of the spout of the teapot. When you look in that vicinity there, know that you're looking near the center of our galaxy. And way down in there among all those stars is a big old black hole that does a lot for us. Now that's a general overview of what you can expect to see in the southern sky tonight. At about 10 o'clock in the evenings, in the first couple weeks of August. Now, late at the end of August, this will be the scene in the south closer to 9 o'clock. But right now, it's about 10 o'clock. If you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much for your support. Leave us a comment. Be sure to like the video. And, and tell us in the comments what you'd like to see next. And let us know how we're doing. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye now.